came here two years ago. They ain't have none of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. could take a seat towards whichever costume trunk has the bench near yours to be. I think we're getting all up and ready to start our adventure. And if there are any latecomers or stragglers who want to still want to join into the show, feel free to go over to my friend in the cool black gown with the flower crown in their hair, and they can help you get all up and dressed. But until then, I think we are getting ready to start up our grand adventure. Now, just as a reminder, our show is called The Legend of the Unicorn. And it doesn't start with an epic quest or a big, big battle. The question is what? And absolutely all of Middle Earth. Do we think this blue thing is in our carpet? Do we have any guesses? You can shout them on out. Water! Water! Oh my gosh, I think that little rabbit had the right answer. Now, rabbit, can you tell me what you said? Lake. It is, in fact, a lake. Can you get a round of applause for that little rabbit there? That almost reminded me to mention one of the most important characters in the show, and that is you all, the audience, to be super supportive and super kind and have just as much fun as our actors. So can we hear it for our actors up on stage here? Shields, and the exact same lake where those princesses get all their magical powers from and where they wash their glorious hair. But I couldn't help but notice that there's one person in the land who is not very fond of this magical lake. Do you think we can guess who that might be? It, it, oh, you see, if everyone's out there drinking that magical water, nobody's drinking the serpent's poison and turning into a troll. And that's just where we start our story today, where that serpent jumped on up into the land and took a few steps out and called upon his troll, who then soon follows towards the serpent. Trolls! And thus that serpent began to pace back and forth and began to think very carefully about his next plan. He said, why my troll, this is ridiculous. We've been spending absolutely all of Middle Earth and all of Middle Earthian summer trying to take over all of Middle Earth with our troll army. And I look around and what do I see? Just a singular troll in my army. And one troll doth not make it a troll army now, does it? So we've got to think of a very clever and very wicked plan in order to take over all of Middle Earth. And so those two got into a big huddle and they thought very carefully why they scratched their heads in deep thought. They scratched their chins. The noses were a little itchy too, so they scratched their noses as well. Until suddenly that troll jumped on up and said, I've got a very wicked idea, you wow, see. I have an idea. And then whispered it over into the ear of the serpent. And why that serpent thought that troll was a genius. And instead of spilling the beans on that secret plan, they went to pursue it. So very late that night, they snuck on over to the banks of the lake. And they crouched down next to the water. That serpent stuck out his fangs and began to pour poison into the lake. And it began to bubble and bubble and toil and trouble until it transformed into the murkiest lake you have ever seen. And in their success, those two jumped into the air and let out a howl of wicked laughter. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, did a very wicked dance all the way back to their cave. Can we get a boo for that wicked behavior? Oh. Oh. Now, Serpent and Troll, if you hear anyone booing, it doesn't mean you're doing a bad job. It means you're doing the greatest job and tried to come to life as they made their way over to the lake like they do every single morning. As they slowly woke up, they made their way over to the water and kneeled on next to the banks and then tilted their heads close to get a drink. But it was that little fox there when he jumped up and said, Wait a minute, you guys. Uh, this water isn't as blue as I remember. And so then those other two rubbed their eyes and looked closer and thought, Why, that fox was right. So they all leaned their noses close to that water and took a big old sniff. Then threw their hands over their noses and that firefly said, Ew, what is that all? It was that rabbit who jumped up and said, I know what this is. This is the serpent's poison. I think the serpent poisoned the lake. What are we going to do? But it was that very level-headed firefly who said, Don't you worry, my scared little rabbit. I know what we've got to do. 
If we go through the forests, we can find the king, and the king will know how to help us. It's just a short trek through the woods. I can guide you all. Follow me, of course. And so those three went on a very adventurous journey through the woods. And it was just a hop and a skip and a jump all throughout the forest until they found their way through the meadows of the land in which they met a grand, grand castle. And so what else would they do than put their hands up and knock on the castle gate three times? And as that castle gate rose up, who would step forward if not the king and the mightiest knight you've ever seen? And those very kind animals, of course, upon seeing this royalty, give a great bow. Well, some of the nymphs of them are waking up in the morning, but of course those king and that knight gave a bow right on back. And then the king took a step on forward and said, My animals, you look terribly terrified. What seems to be the terrible trouble? And it was that fox who took a step forward and said, Wanna hot chair, this man thinks of a person thinking we didn't know what to do, so the god come over to you to get it off us. Did you get all that? Of course the king did, for the king is a very, very fluent in fox. And so when those knights heard the terrible news about the serpent poisoning the lake, they threw their swords high into the air and let out a howl of rage. Roar! But don't you worry, you see, for that king was ever so brave. And that king said, don't you worry, my knife, let's get you armed with some of those brave swords. And now then, that king held up that magical horn from around his neck, and he said, when I was a wee wee prince, you see, the unicorn came across us in the land and was able to teach us a very magical, magical song, where if I play it on this magic horn, she'll emerge and be able to help us again. And I think that is exactly what we need right now, don't you think? And so that king, of course, held up the magical horn into the air and began to play. And as that song played, why, of course, then everyone went running around frantically looking for the unicorn. They went all over the place into the sky. They looked high into the sky underneath their feet, in front of the person behind them, behind the person in front of them, over their swords and shields, underneath their little ears. But still, there was absolutely nowhere and no unicorn to be seen. And everyone, ever so confused, began to make their way back over to the king and said, My king, we couldn't find the unicorn anywhere. What are we going to do now? But that king had an extra plan, you see, for he's ever so wise. He said, Well, my people, I got an idea. I think we should go over to the tallest of crystal mountains. For if we climb it, you see, why then, of course, there will be... The, unit, the princesses who live on top, and they are the wisest princesses in all the land, so if we go over to the mountain, I'm sure we'll find them. Follow me, I know the way. And so that king guided all the people in the land over through the meadows and across the woods until after a very quick bit, they made their way to the bottom of the crystal mountain. And they all stopped, and they looked up, and they looked up, and they looked up even more, and they still couldn't see the top of it. And that king began to grow awfully frightened while his knees began to shake as he turned back towards his people and said, I've never climbed a mountain half this high before. What do you think, guys? Can we do it? Yeah. After a hesitation, of course, they said, why, yes, we can, of course. And so they stretched their arms high into the sky and began to climb that magical mountain. And so, of course, I could have sworn that this mountain had a nickname, but I can't remember what it was. Was it the big mountain? Was it the shiny mountain? Oh, I remember. I think it was called the slippery mountain. Oh, no. And everyone began to slip and slide absolutely all over the place. They slipped to the left side and to the right side, and they let out a great big scream. They were slipping around in circles until they started to slip and slide close towards the edge of a cliff. So they all had to hold on real, real tight in order to be able to pull themselves over the mountain top. And they pulled up, and they pulled up, and they pulled up even more until finally they made their way up to the top. But you see, they were so exhausted from not having the magical power, that magical lake, that they all collapsed and fell to the ground. How terrible! Now this was almost the very, very end of our story, if not for those wonderful magical princesses. For they saw those people in their gardens and they knew just how to help, you see? Why, they began to put their wands high into the air and swirl them round and round and round. And then a very, very funny thing happened, you see? Why, clouds began to form from up ahead and I could almost hear, what is that? 
by a little bit of thunder. So what would come from all those clouds and all that thunder, you see? Why, it was rain! It began to rain across the people, of course, and those princesses said, drink on up all this magical water and fear yourselves be healed and replenished. And so they drank and drank and drank and felt themselves grow stronger and stronger and stronger until they jumped into the air and cheered for the princesses. Let's hear it for those princesses, of course. And now it was the queen of the princesses, the tallest in the land with a glorious pink gown. Why, she took a step on forward. And then she said, well, what seems to be the problem, everybody? You look terribly terrified. And it was that king there who said, we don't know how to tell you this, my queen, but you see, the serpent poisoned the lake and we don't know what to do. And so that queen then said, well, hmm. I think us princesses must huddle up for a second to think of a plan. And so all the princesses got into a great big huddle. They began to nod their heads, yes, like, oh, I think this will work, I think this will work. Then shake their head low, like, mm, I'm not too sure about that, I'm not too sure. Then they let out a little giggle between each other because something in there was very, very funny. Then they turned back towards the people, and you see it was the queen who said, well, I'm not sure how to tell you this, but I do not believe that we've got enough magic between us to be able to purify the entire lake. But don't you worry, for I've got a plan. You see, when I was a wee wee princess, which was not very long ago, the unicorn team came to us in our hour of greatest need and taught me a magical song, where if I whistle it, she'll be able to rejoin us and help us however we need to be helped. And that sounds like we ought to do that, don't you think? And so the queen took a big old deep breath and began to whistle the magical tune. And everybody scattered, looking everywhere for the unicorn. They ran absolutely all over the place, looked high into the sky, underneath their feet, over their flower fronts, through their swords and shields, in front of the person behind them, behind the person in front of them, till they were all spinning around in circles, and they still couldn't find the unicorn anywhere. So not knowing what to do, they hung their heads low and made their way back over to the queen and said, my queen, we still couldn't find the unicorn anywhere and we're getting awfully sad. What are we going to do now? But you see, it was the queen why she knew just what to do. She said, well, my people, I believe we ought to go all the way back to the magical forest, to the magical lake, and see if the unicorn has purified it yet. But even if she didn't, why our destiny lies there all the same. I know a secret shortcut, so follow me through the enchanted forest. And so, of course, the queen led everybody through that shortcut through the enchanted forest. And of course, this forest is typically full of kind-hearted and chivalrous magical trees who love to guide adventurers and travelers towards wherever they need to go. But these trees were too close to the unicorn, to the serpent's poison, and thus became cruel and very, very wicked. So what else would they do than droop their branches so low everyone had a duck far underneath them? And when everyone is getting really good at that, they sprouted up their roots and everyone had to step far over them. So they were caught between ducking under their branches and stepping over the roots and ducking under their branches and stepping over those roots. And my gosh, it was a long and very, 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 very tiring journey. But by the time they made their way all the way back to the magical lake, they ran towards its banks and saw that it was still poisoned. So not knowing what to do next, they kneeled down next to the waters and began to cry tears of grief. Why everyone in the land was so, so distraught, you see? Well, maybe not everybody in the land. For that troll and serpent were quite pleased with themselves. Why, they glanced across the people and thought, why, this is perfect. Now all we've got to do is sneak up behind them, and then we can dunk the heads into the water. And so they then began to creep close, and then they ducked behind a bush, right behind the people right here. But I couldn't help but notice that these people seemed to be kneeled behind a ragweed bush. And there was nothing that serpents and trolls are more allergic to than ragweed. So their noses started to itch and itch and scratch and sniff till they let out the biggest sneezes you've ever heard. And of course that caught the attention of the queen, for she jumped on up and said, My king, do we have to plant any sneezing bushes on this side of the lake? And the king said, Well, no, sneezing bushes are on the other side of the lake. Those aren't sneezing bushes. That is an ambush. Now everybody battle formation on this side of the lake. And all the princesses and animals stood in the back towards me. Why the king and the knight stood in a line in front by my friend. 
And as everyone got formed up and got into the right bits and places, why then that king said, Now my princesses, you protect the animals, and my animals, you protect the princesses. We are going to go investigate. And so, of course, those knights in that king took a few steps forward. But that serpent, I'm sure, still had one more sneeze left in them, and they let it out. And that knocked those knights three steps back. And now that king said, All right, my people, draw your weapons. Slow motion attack! And this was by far the fiercest and by far the slowest the motion battle in all the Middle Earth. It almost seemed like the princess, well, the knights were winning, and then the serpent, and then the knights, and then the serpent. And well, they thought, well, maybe the princesses ought to help too. So they knew just what to do. They put their wands into the air and staying where they were and by me, swallowed them into the sky, of course. And that caused the serpent and troll to shrink smaller and smaller and smaller, you see. But you see, because those princesses did not have the magical powers of the magical lake, their magic backfired in a poof. And that serpent and troll grew bigger and bigger and bigger till they were almost 10 feet tall. And those knights were almost outmatched. And so that king said, knights, hold up your shields, everybody. And every single knight in the land held up their shields. And then the battlefield froze. For that troll saw her reflection in those shields for the very first time and grew so terrified of her own face that she screamed. <laughs> and we're running on back to her cave, leaving that serpent on his lonesome. And of course he thought, well, if you can't do something right, you've got to do it yourself. Then he threw down his sword and threw down his shield and thought, that a little magic never hurt. So he put his arms high into the air and cast blue lightning across the land, hypnotizing everybody instantly. Their eyes grew wide, their arms stuck out in front of them, and then they were all slowly guided back towards the banks of the lake. Why, every single person in the land began to make their way back over to the lake and kneel towards its waters, of course. And then you see, and then you see everyone's heads tilted closer and closer towards that poison. And the serpent was becoming very, very pleased with himself, of course. But that was until that queen jumped up one final time and said, I'll try to whistle the magic song one more. And thus began to whistle the tune. But the unicorn was still nowhere to be seen. And so then that serpent got even more furious. He threw his arms into the air and cast red lightning across the land, making their magical leg look like fruit punch, which was too irresistible. And everybody kneeled down towards the waters and tilted their heads even closer and closer towards the poison. That was until the king jumped on up and said, what if I play the magic song with you, queen? And thus began to play his part in the magical tune. And what else would that do than make the serpent even more full of rage? With a howl of wicked laughter, <laughs> he put his hands higher than they've ever been and cast yellow lightning upon the land, making the magical lake look like lemonade with ice cubes in it, which is the most refreshing drink in all of Middle Earth. And everyone's heads tilted closer and closer towards the water. But it was too late, you see. For that magical tune carried itself into the mountains and took itself upon the north wind, where finally, in the hour of greatest need, the unicorn emerged. She glanced upon the people in need and went running down towards the lake to stand in between the serpent and the water. And that serpent, ever so furious, began to throw that lightning over to the unicorn. And she staggered further and further back until her hoof almost hit the water. But she would yield no further. And in a final act of rage, that serpent lunged towards the unicorn and went crashing upon her horn and fell to the ground. And now that unicorn turned back around and touched her magical horn to the poison water. And it began to bubble and bubble and toil and trouble until it transformed back into the bluest of blue you have ever seen. And everyone dove their heads into the water and began to drink and drink and drink. And that unicorn vanished just as quickly as she arose. And you see everyone is feeling the magical properties of the magical lake until they all jumped up into the air and started hopping and dancing up and down. Party until everybody froze. And that serpent and troll stood up one final time. And that serpent thought, well, can that magic lake heal wounds? And before waiting for an answer, those two dove into the water. And then a very funny thing happens, you see. That troll dropped her weapons 
and the serpent's scales began to peel off of his back. And then who would emerge from that water? Why, the two most kind-hearted and chivalrous people you have ever met. And of course, that serpent began to do the world's silliest dance, and everyone danced along too. Whatever he did with his hands, they did. Whatever he did with his feet, they did also. And thus was the beginning of the world's funnest and grandest dance party in all of Middle Earth. It went day after day after day, and night after night after night, of course. And when everyone's feet were just a little bit tired, they all put their arms high into the air and cheered for the magical lake. And then a very funny thing happened, you see. They all put their arms back up, turned towards their audience, and took a great big bow to thunderous applause. so much for joining and thank you very very much for watching we always are here every single day any day the park is open we are too and we always have four days four shows every day at 11 30 1 o'clock 3 and 4 30 so come back around if you would like to see some more and now just so you know of course if you're wondering what makes that magical unicorn so so magical it is because that she has the magical powers of truth and so me and my friend up here will be selling a few souvenirs after the show once you all put all of your costumes away. So thank you so much and we hope you have a fantastic rest of your day in the land.